is Mental Health Awareness Month, and an annual index tracks happiness, and it shows kids and young people are not doing so well here in the U.S. In fact, the U.S. dropped out of the top 20 happiest countries for the first time, driven by a large drop in the well-being of Americans under 30. And the age disparity here is stark. So Americans over 60, some of the happiest in the world. Americans under 30, some of the saddest. Joining us this morning, we have Sharon Wolfolk, president of NAMI, that's the National Alliance on Mental Illness here in Kern County, and Dr. Ravi Goklani. Uh, we want to talk a little bit first with you, Dr. Ravi. What is going on here with unhappiness among younger Americans under 30? Okay, let me mention quite a few issues. Uh, number one issue is that basically economic hardship. The college tuition has gone up, cost of living has gone up, food, clothes, shelter, everything is getting expensive and the financial distress. Number two is the social media impact. That is creating more kind of a competitiveness in reference to who's better looking and the fashion and list goes on and on. It's TikTok and Instagram and chat, GPT chat and so forth. Third issue is that I think the polarization of the political polarization of the country. Our country is divided on so many complex mm -hmm. social issues. So the youth are kind of confused and frustrated that why the government has to be involved in people's decision. And they, that I see that in my office every single day. They talk about that. So another issue is that basically uh, the isolation. What COVID-19 created is that people got more addicted to social media and the YouTube, Netflix, if you look at their membership has gone up. The who, so I, that kind of thing. Then I think the another thing is that I'll tell you what is missing is that in the high, the technology and the science is advancing much faster. But our education system in the junior college, Cal State, and the, also in the UC system has not caught up with that. Hmm. That is lagging behind. For example, I'll give you that. And I, in my opinion, that during the high school in the 11th grade, they should start getting the career counseling. That what they want to do. You think, oh, they're too young. They are not that young. You need to put that seed when they're in 11th grade instead mm -hmm. of otherwise you don't put that seed. They will put a seed of cannabis or alcohol in their system. Mm -hmm. So before they get into that, they'd start thinking about their careers and they could make a good decision. I'll give you a good example. Somebody can go into the Bachelor in Arts because either they are, are interested or they think it's easy way out. It's the easiest subject. But then they find out after they spend four years so much money and everything else, and they found out they still will get a frontline basic job. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, the, especially the, you know, the junior college, means the, uh, like, uh, uh, the community college, like mm -hmm. Bakersfield College, and, and they are nationwide. They should have more like a specific training program. We need more electrician, we need more plumber, we need more air conditioning technician, and we need more kind of, there's a shortage because Bakersfield is growing so fast. Right. And, but the thing is those programs are not there. So the education we are providing some of in the college, junior college and the Cal State or UC system, that 10% may be getting benefited or the 90% may not be getting benefited. So I believe there is a career counseling needed in the high school. There need to be, uh, there are plenty of people in every city who are willing to volunteer their time, educate and empower the next generation. And there is another reality is there used to be American dream by age 30 get married two children house with a two car garage that does not exist anymore. Right. The, the, you've been priced out of the American dream in a lot of cases. You've given parents and families and even schools I think a lot of actionable items here. Things that we can actually do to affect the happiness and well-being of young people. Sharon can you tell us a little bit about the services offered through NAMI? Yes we provide free or, uh, education and support groups for anyone who is impacted by mental health challenges. We want individuals to know that they're not alone, that there are answers and, and, and things available for them to do. And so again, that's why we offer the free services, whatever they're looking for, the educational part of it, the support part of it, and we also have what we, um, a pantry for individuals who are in need of food. We help with the medication. So there are a lot of services available through NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. All right, so if you want to access some of those services, the uh, the support groups, the pantry, what do you do? Yeah, they just call our number, the 661-858-3255, or they can go onto our website, and all the answers that they need are there and available to them. All right, Sharon, Dr. Goklani, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Marilyn, for having us. We